500 million years of evolution in a simulation. Green fluorescent proteins, commonly known as GFPs, and the family of fluorescent proteins are some of the most beautiful proteins in nature. But they occur in only a handful of branches in the tree of life. The discovery of GFP led to the award of a Nobel Prize and it has become one of the most widely used tools in biology and bioinformatics as it allows scientists to see a protein within the cells. Evolutionary Scale just launched ESM3, a frontier AI model for life sciences, enabling scientists to understand, imagine, and create proteins. But why proteins? Every living organism shares the same genetic code across some 20 amino acids, life's alphabet. ESM3 understands all this biological data, translates it, and speaks it fluently to be used as a generative tool. How cool is that? What is the team at Evolutionary Scale trying to do, and how? What they're trying to do is to make biology programmable. And they're aiming to do this by creating proteins beyond nature. Here is one version of the press release that they have done, and a little bit of background about the team. Evolutionary Scale is a frontier AI research lab public benefit corporation dedicated to developing artificial intelligence for life sciences. Evolutionary Scale's models support groundbreaking research and development in health, environmental sciences, and beyond. The company was founded in July 2023 and has raised more than $142 million in seed funding from Nat Friedman, Daniel Ross, and Lux Capital, with participations from Amazon and NVIDIA, as well as several prominent angel investors. The founding team at Evolutionary Scale was working at Meta's FAIR, Fundamental AI Research Unit, uh, up until July 23. They developed ESM1 while they were at Meta. Evolutionary Scale claims to be committed to developing artificial intelligence for the benefit of human health. Let's get a little bit deeper into the details. There is one interesting comment by the co-founder of Flux Capital, which is calling it the chat GPT moment for biology. What have they achieved? So the first question, what is ESM3 and how is it different than chat GPT? ESM3 simultaneously reasons over fundamental properties of a protein. Those are sequence, structure, and function. Users in a mix of sequence, structure, and function data simultaneously, prompting ESM3 to explore a vast space of possibilities. This is possibly the largest compute ever deployed on a biological model. It's been trained on one trillion teraflops of computing power. And the model's training is no joke either. It has been trained on 2.78 billion natural protein samples from various organisms and biomes. And the largest model, is 98 billion parameters. For those of you who are interested, I'm leaving a link to their white paper. It's a must read. Here is what their press release says. ESM3, simulating 500 million years of evolution with a language model. They start off with uh, giving a little bit of a background about how life evolved on Earth, what were the chemical reactions, and what were the inventions by nature. They point out that nature invented RNA, proteins, and DNA, and they call them the core molecules of life, and created the ribosome, a molecular factory that builds proteins from instructions in the genome. They go on to say that proteins are wondrous dynamic molecules with incredible functions, from molecular engines that power motion to photosynthetic machines that capture light and convert it into energy, scaffoldings that build internal skeletals of cells complex sensors that interact with the environment processing system and the programs that run within those systems. All are made of protein. Proteins underlie diseases and health and many life-saving medicines are proteins. They build this narrative and then they take the narrative on to biology. And they, they, they say that biology is the most advanced technology that has ever been created, far beyond anything that people have engineered. The ribosome is pro programmable. It takes the codes of proteins in the form of RNA and builds them up from scratch, fabricating at an atomic scale. Every cell in every organism on Earth has thousands to millions of these molecular factories. But even the most sophisticated computer, uh, computational tools created to date barely scratch the surface. We cannot replicate this. If we could learn to read and write in the code of life, it would make biology programmable. And that, I think, is the key takeaway of their release. What they're aiming to do is to make biology 
programmable. What are they going to achieve because of this? Trial and error would be replaced by logic. And here they're talking about the functions that we build in different organisms. All of our efforts in pharmacology, in disease, in medicine are trial and error. They would be replaced by logic and painstaking experiments by simulation. And here is how they picture this vision to be achieved. As they introduce themselves as a new company, they say that they're excited to present ESM3, a frontier language model for the life sciences that advances the ability to program, create a code of life. I'm gonna leave a link to the preprint version of the publication where they describe the generation of a green fluorescent protein. A green fluorescent protein is a protein that is responsible for the glowing colors of a jellyfish, of the coral, of the insects, and it is a very important tool in modern biotechnology. It gives scientists the ability to see the protein within cells. ESMGFP has a sequence that is only 58% similar to the closest known fluorescent protein. And I will give you why this is so significant later down in the video. From the rate of diversification of GFPs found in nature, we estimate that this generation of new fluorescent protein is equivalent to simulating 500 million years of evolution. That is incredible. The power and potential of these new technologies call for a commitment to principles of responsible development, including transparency, accountability from the start. To that end, drawing on our experience as scientists and researchers, we have crafted a responsible development framework that will guide our progress. They are fully aware of the capabilities of this kind of a platform in the right and malicious hands. Here is where they explain how they, they were able to achieve such remarkable feats. Across AI, we see the power of scaling. As models scale increases in parameters, data and compute, larger models gain new emergent capabilities that smaller models lack. In many different domains, generalist models trained on a diverse set of data are outperforming specialist models. The incredible pace of the new AI advances is being driven by increasingly large models, increasingly large data sets, and increasing computational power. What they say is that the same pattern holds true in biology. As model scale increases in parameter data and compute, larger models gain new emergent capabilities that smaller models lack. In many different domains, generalist models trained on a diverse set of data are outperforming specialist models. In research over the last five years, the ESM team has explored scaling in biology. And they found as a language model scales, they develop an understanding of underlying principles of biology and discover biological structure and function. Reasoning over sequence, structure, and function of proteins. A large language model is not supposed to do this. How are they able to do, uh, pull this part off? Language models operate over discrete units or tokens. To create one that can reason over three of the fundamental biological properties of proteins, sequence, structure, and functions, what they had to do was transform a three-dimensional structure and function into discrete alphabets and construct a way to write every three-dimensional structure as a sequence of letters. This allowed ESM3 to be trained at scale, unlocking emergent generative capabilities. ESM3's vocabulary bridges sequence, structure, and function, all within the same language model. Here is a diagram that they show of how a multi-headed, multi-track transformer jointly reasons over protein sequence, structure, and function. They further go on to then explain what do they actually mean by programming biology. What does it mean to them? ESM3 is a generative model and makes biology programmable. It can follow prompts to generate new proteins, which scientists can then interact with, guided to create a plethora of applications such as medicine, biology, research, clean energy. They actually give a very cool example of an application of this technology in the clean energy space, which I'm really interested in. Here it is. ESM3's multimodal reasoning power enables scientists to generate a new protein with an unprecedented degree of control. For example, the model can be prompted to combine the structure, 
sequence and functions to propose a potential scaffold for the active site of PETase, an enzyme that degrades PET, a target of interest of protein engineers for breaking down plastic waste. 500 million years of evolution in a simulation. Green fluorescent proteins, commonly known as GFPs, and the family of fluorescent proteins are some of the most beautiful proteins in nature. But they occur in only a handful of branches in the tree of life. The discovery of GFP led to the award of a Nobel Prize and it has become one of the most widely used tools in biology and bioinformatics as it allows scientists to see a protein within the cells. Scientists have actually discovered many variants of GFP in nature and have managed to create variants of those natural proteins in labs as well. The very first artificial variant were found by making a handful of mutations that increase the brightness or change the color. But with recent lab and machine learning techniques, it has been possible to extend this search to find more distant variants that differ up to 20% of the sequence. But still, the bulk of the function of the GFPs have come not from protein engineering, but from prospecting nature. We find naturally occurring GFPs with similar levels of sequence identity are separated by hundreds of millions of years of evolution. Using an analysis similar to the one that you might perform for a new protein found in the natural world, what they do is they estimate that the ESM GFP represents an equivalent of over 500 million years of natural evolution performed by an evolutionary simulator. How cool is that? They go on and they explain that it's a public benefit company and they have a framework for responsible development. But the most interesting part for me personally is the open model. Here is what they say about it. Since inception, the ESM project has committed to open science with code and model releases. And our commitment continues. Very excited. We believe that sharing research and code accelerates progress and contributes to understanding and reducing risks, ultimately maximizing the positive impact on the world. Right after this, they share several examples of how their previous releases have benefited in the world. And one of them is really interesting. One of them stands out and it's really interesting that I want to share with you guys, which is BioNTech and InstaDeep fine-tuned an ESM language model on COVID spike proteins to detect variants that would pose a higher risk to the public health, successfully flagging all 16 variants of concern before they were designated by the WHO. This is followed by the announcement of their uh, public release of the weights and code for their ESN3 1.4 billion open model, which allows scientists and developers to build on the ideas and architecture of ESN3. We're excited to see what you create. I'm super excited. I'm going to leave a link to the uh, GitHub repo where you can uh, download the code as well as the weights think it around. Let me know what you think. If you have any comments, queries, or questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you with the next one.